This cycle of another song, a different day. It feels so fake. Copy and paste. A form- Okay, good morning to everyone. So we are now at our week four of the Kwan Gangan webinar series. So I will be your host for today. I am Eleanor Villaverde. And there are just some reminders um, during our webinar. So kindly keep your microphones off and you may send your questions via chat, whether it's our Zoom or our Facebook chat. And towards the end of their seminar, Okay, please fill out our evaluation form via Google Forms. Okay, the certificates will be sent to the email indicated in the forms. Okay, so in case you missed out on our previous webinars, you can go to our YouTube channel, Conserve Kaigangan, where the recordings of week one, two, and three have already been uploaded. So this, semin- this webinar is made possible by Conserve Kaigangan, a research program of the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and Summer State University, funded by DOST under grants and aid program. So before we begin our webinar, please feel free to greet everyone and to introduce yourselves through our chat box. Please include your organization and location if possible. Okay, again, I would just like to remind everyone to please keep your microphones off. And if you have any questions, okay, please send them using our Zoom or our Facebook chat. And again, at the end of our webinar, please fill out our evaluation form, which we will display. Uh, the links will be displayed on our screen and we will also be um, placing them on our chat box and the certificates will be sent to your emails indicated in the evaluation form. Okay. So um, for our first speaker for today, okay, is Miss Elaine Loreen C. Villanueva. Okay. She is a senior science research specialist of the Institute of Biological Sciences, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, under IBS UPLB. Okay. She works as the conser- she works for the Conserve Kaigangan program under the Career Incentive Program of the Science Education Institute of the OST the same government institution that also awarded her her undergraduate and graduate scholarships. She completed her Bachelor of Science in Biology at the University of the Philippines, Manila, and finished her Master of Science in Environmental Science in UPLB. Her research interests include environmental biology and conservation of the Philippine flora. So without further ado, let us please listen to Ms. Elaine's talk regarding the biodiversity of Keigangan forests in Samar. So to welcome her, please show your clap reactions and uh, 
in your um, screens to encourage her and to make her feel welcome. Okay, so I will now be share. I will now be um, sharing the screen with Miss Elaine for her presentation. Good morning, everyone. I am Elaine Villanueva of Conserve Kaigan Project One, and I will be presenting this webinar titled Biodiversity of Forest Over Limestone Ecosystems in Summer Island Natural Park. To begin, let's quickly go down to the history of the SIND today. So, in 1996, by virtue of the Presidential Proclamation Number 744, SINP began as Summer Island Forest Reserve. Then in 1992, the National Integrated Protected Area System, or the NIFAS Act, was established as a law. And in 2003, the former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo established SINP as a protected area to conserve and sustainably use its natural resources. So what are forests over limestone? Also known as karst forest or limestone forest or in Samar dialect, Kaigangan, forest over limestone is a forest formation type in tropical rainforest regions thriving along limestone hill areas. Summer Island has the largest limestone formation in the Philippines. We, as a research program, has this goal of assessing and conserving Kaigan biodiversity towards its sustainable management in Summer Island. We are also supporting the UN Sustainable Development Goals as our project components are contributing in their own ways to achieve the SDG targets. However, for this presentation, I will emphasize how our research program has been helping in meeting these two specific goals. So we have here the goal 15 or the life on land, which targets specifically for the conservation and sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems. And goal 11, we're in sustainable cities and communities wherein we target to strengthen the efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. So this presentation has the following objectives. First, to provide information on the outcomes of the plant and animal biodiversity assessment we conducted in SINP. Second, we described the three community structure in SINP. And lastly, we highlight the significance of the nomination of SINP as a UNESCO Natural World Heritage Site. So for the methodology, our study area is, of course, located in Summer Island, the easternmost chunk of island in the Visayas region. It is the third largest island in the country and has the largest area of limestone formation. Our assessment was conducted in two municipalities of Samar. We have Paranas in the province of Samar and Taf in the province of Eastern Samar. The broken lines you can see in the map show the boundary of SINT which covers about a third of the island. Summer, in general, is classified as type 2 under the modified coronas classification. Type 2 is characterized to have to show no dry season at all throughout the year. The figure you can see on the screen right now is called a climogram or a Walter diagram. These are graphical representations of the average monthly temperature and precipitation of a certain area over a 30-year period. On the x-axis, you will see the months of the year. And on the y-axis, we have here the temperature and the rainfall blue line. So the temperature here is the red line. So we generated these graphs from the climate data we obtained from Pagasa. And as you can see here, the locations indicated here are the nearest weather stations from our study area. Katbalogan Synoptic Station is the nearest weather station in Paranas, and Borongan Synoptic Station is the nearest one from Taft. And this graph is very useful in identifying the period of dry seasons in a certain area. 
it is also helpful in characterizing the climate of um, a certain area. And the period is considered dry if the precipitation line or the blue line falls below the temperature line. So in this case, um, there is indeed no dry season throughout the year in summer. For the final assessment, um, the methods were adopted and modified from the manual on biodiversity assessment and monitoring system for terrestrial ecosystems by Cruz et al. So the images you can see here on the left are some of our dropping methods. So we have here the peat pulp drop for amphibians and small lizards. We have here the cage drop for non-volant mammals and camera drops. Also, we use um, hand capturing and the use of forceps and snake to hook and tongs for herpetofauna and these nets for birds and volant mammals. Aside from that, we also collected secondary data and ethnobiological accounts to complete the inventory in Paranas and Tank. For the floral assessment, we did quadrat or plot method for the assessment of trees. So this on the left, you can see here the um, diagrammatic um, illustration of our assessment for plants. So these are measured 20 meters by 20 meters. And for the understories, we laid line transects within these plots. And these lines, uh, these tra line transects are 5 meters in length with 1 meter interval. Aside from that, we also collected secondary data for the review in relation to species occurrence and endemicity. Also, please note that um, we collected plant samples here and they were processed as voucher specimens which are deposited in the Plant Biology Division Herbarium in UPLP. The maps you're seeing here are the contour maps indicating the position and of the sampling plots in Paranas and Tank. And it is quite notable that the limestone terrain in SINT is quite rugged, making it challenging for the project team to conduct fieldwork around the time. So it was conducted last October 2019. And these plots were selected based on the biophysical characteristics of the area, including heterogeneity of biodiversity, topographic attributes, and the presence of anthropogenic disturbances in the area. So let's now proceed to the results of the panel assessment. And just to warn you, we will show images of wild animals in the next slide, such as lizards, snakes, bats, and etc just a warning. For the final inventory summary, um, we collected a total of 106 vertebrate species in Parana Samar composed of four amphibians, nine reptiles, 84 birds, and nine mammal species with an overall endemicity of 67%. Whereas in fact, Eastern Samar, we inventoried a total of 112 species composed of five amphibians, eight reptiles, eight birds, and 12 mammals with, the over, with an overall endemicity of 67.86%. So these numbers are based on our fieldwork data and the review of published literature in Paranas and Pac. For the amphibians, so here are some of the notable fauna in Paranas and Pac. We have here um, Pulcrana grandicola or the Mindanao striped spring frog. And then we have here three species of Platymantis, Platymantis quinteri, Platymantis rabori, and Platymantis bayani. Note that these three species are endemic to Mindanao Pleistocene Aggregate Island Complex or Mindanao Pike. Also, Platymantis bayani is also, we also found it as a new locality record in Paranas. And moreover, um, please note that um, Platymantis rabori and Bayani are listed as vulnerable under the BAO 2019-09. For the reptiles, we have here some of the notable species such as Tropidolemus subanulatus or the killed green heat viper, 
And then we have here the Lycodon dumerili or the Dumeril's Asian wolf snake. And then the Draco or Natus or the white spotted flying lizard. And the Eutropis mutis carinata. And then please note that um, the Heat Viper and Varano samarensis for the summer monitor lizard are listed as other threatened species based on the DAO 2019-09. For the birds, um, we have here the southern rufous horndew or the Buceros hydrocorax semigaliatus. We also have here the Ripidura samarensis, the Pita skiri subspecies celestis, and the Papipteron amethystinus or the amethyst brown dove. So please note that the species with yellow fonts here are endemic to meet the now right. Also, we also list, I listed here some species that are threatened, such as the Bifeco paga jeperi or the Philippine eagle. And that's it. Babiteron amethystinus or the amethyst brown dove, the pita stiri, we are listed as critically endangered, vulnerable, and as well as the one here, the hornbill, is listed as vulnerable. For the bullet mammals, the images you can see here are bullet bats. We have here the Tenochirus dragori, or the greater musky fruit bat. And then we have here the Tenochirus minor, or the lesser musky fruit bat. And the Macroglossus minimus, or the dogger tooth long nose fruit bat. And please note that the lesser musky fruit bat here is endemic to Mindanao Pai region. Here are some of the notable species for non-volant mammals. So not included in the photo, we have here the Tarsus syricta or the Philippine Tarsier and the Sus philippensis or the Philippine warty tea. Note that um, the Philippine Tarsier is listed as near threatened while the Philippine warty tea is listed as vulnerable under the IUCN. You also have here in the images the Philippine flying wool or the Cynchocephalus polans. And then we have here the Paradoxurus philippinensis or the common palm civet. And we also have here the Bulinus bagobus or the bagobo rat and the Ratus everetti or the Philippine forest rat. Bulinus bagobus or the bagobo rat here is a species endemic to Mindanao Pai. So on the next slides, I will show to you the results of the floral assessment, which come from our fieldwork data and of course from our secondary data that we collected. We have here the floristic summary for Parana summer. We recorded a total of 99 species composed of 63 genera and 44 families. Whereas in fact, Eastern summer, we inventoried a total of 30 species represented by 22 genera and 18 families. For the flora in Paranas, we had this breakdown of 72 undersperm species, 11 pteridophyte species, and 1 dicophyte species. Among these, 38 are Philippine endemics, while 18 are non-endemic species. Also, in terms of species representation, um, the Pam family or Arecaceae has the highest number of species with 11. And then we have here Euphorbiaceae and Dipterocarpaceae, each with five species each. For the tap flora, we have here a breakdown of 18 angiosperms, one gymnosperm, and four pteridophyte species. Among these, five are Philippine endemics, and as per species representation, we have here four families that are made up of two species each. We have here the Araceae, Euphorbiaceae, Pandanaceae, and Sapotaceae. So here, you can see here the images of some of our notable plants. We have here the Tectaria calcarea, labeled as letter A. This is a fern species. And then we have here Artocarpus rubrovinius. That's letter B. And then we have here Hansea wenzeliana. Artocarpus letter C. Together, these three are recorded as New Island records in Paranas. 
also we included here two pictures of um, plants here. We have Wallaceo dendron celebicum, or locally known as banuyo. The, the wood of this plant is commonly used in furniture making. Also, the last but not the least, here in this set of images on the slides, we have here Aquilaria cuminiana. The common name of this plant is Lapnisan, and this is a highly economically valuable plant, and it is a source of agar wood, which is a highly prized red seed with multiple uses. Also, I'd like to emphasize here that these two species on the right um, what the Baluyo and Labnisan are classified as vulnerable species under the DAO 2017-11 and IUC. So the graph you can see right now is a good figure that compares the three structures in Paranas Delta. So on the x-axis, you will show, you will see here the names of the plots in Paranas and Tap, while the y-axis provides the different measures of species diversity. In terms of the number of tree species, the plots in Paranas have higher numbers of trees than Tap. And while in the terms of the number of tree individuals, though it's quite not obvious in this graph, the plots in Tap actually have higher values, although by a slim margin. Also, it is quite remarkable here that in terms of the diversity indices, so we have here the Simpson 1 minus D, the, Sh the Shannon index, and the Fisher's alpha. So Paranas generally have the higher values of diversity yes, per plot. Here is another figure showing a dendrogram, which is an output of the cluster analysis. So why are we doing cluster analysis? So it is a useful tool a multivariate analysis to classify the plant communities according to the similarities of the species. So what we did here was at first to create a species plot table, and then we used that data to a statistical software to run the analysis or the cluster analysis. For this, we use paleontological statistics for the hierarchical cluster analysis using the UPGME algorithm and the uh, Sorensen index as a measure of similarity. So we identified three communities based on this cluster analysis. The rightmost cluster is the cluster one, which is formed at approximately 0.55 index of similarity, which is composed of three plots from that. Also, the next cluster is a large one, composed of 10 plots, composed mostly of plots from TAP. Lastly, we have here cluster T. I labeled this one as cluster T, and this is another cluster composed. It's a mixture of plots from Paranas, although mostly are from Paranas, and we have here one plot from TAP. The table here provides information on what's inside these three clusters identified. The dominant species here were identified using dominance analysis by Osawa. And on the first rows here, two rows, you can see here the dominant species based on the relative basal area and the relative density. Some of you, some few observations here. We have here cluster one and cluster three. The both ends of the column here have multiple co-dominant species, while cluster two, despite having the highest number of plots, have only three condominating species. Cluster two is consistently dominated by Shorea negrosensis, Yakal, and Hathea wenzeliana. Also, the diameter at rest height or the DBH values generally are so small, but the trees are densely packed in the plant. Also, Paranas has higher diver diversity, but that has a higher number of individuals. It is also noteworthy that the TBH, the mean, and the maximum values of cluster 2 are higher. And this paper, uh, this results compared to a similar analysis in subtropical karst in China. 
um, summer has higher DPH values and denser tree composition. And what we can see here is that um, in terms of composition and structure, forest over limestone in summer is quite unique which has been influenced by its unique uh, terrain and environment. This is the last part of the presentation where we now show you how Summer Island Natural Park is worthy of its nomination as a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site. An area can be identified as a World Heritage Site if it possesses an outstanding universal value. That is according to the UNESCO World Natural Heritage Convention, which defined outstanding universal value as cultural and or natural significance, which is so exceptional as to transcend national boundaries and to be of common importance for the present and future generations of all humanity. In the succeeding slides, I will show you the natural and cultural significance of SINT. I previously showed you the diversity of the SINT Kaigangan based on the results of our assessment. Aside from that, there are a lot of publications and references about the Samar biota that have proven the biological significance of Samar. Thus, Samar Island is listed as a key biodiversity area, or KBA. KBA is a site that contributes significantly to the global persistence of biodiversity. And it is a critical area that has been a home to critical populations of threatened species. Aside from the quite long list of references, the program has contributed to the body of knowledge by sharing the results of our research to publications. So these publications are also important to as important evidence to strengthen the nomination of SINT. I will share the links of these articles on the comments later in case you wanted to read and check this out. Next, to see its cultural significance, let's try to look at the human systems involved in SINT. We will also see how these human systems are deeply integrated with the forest over limestone of Samar. Let's begin with this unique ecosystem service provided by the landscape, which is the sustainable livelihood through ecotourism. First, we have the SINT Ecolodge in Paranas, which has been managed by the SINT family. Also, we have the Paranas Eco Trail and Birding Site, which has been managed by the People's Organization in Samar. One remarkable cultural significance of SINT is the mat weaving in summer. This has been discussed before during Prof. Marlon's presentation on the usage of plants. The women of Basai, summer have been using the leaves of the kog or Fimbristilis to create beautiful patterns of mat or banit. These groups of women prefer to perform weaving in South Cape, which is also located in SINT. And according to Escoda, this practice has been existing ever since the Spanish occupation. And up to this day, this tradition continues and serves as a source of livelihood among the women of Basai. And lastly, the program has been helping in the local communities in doing community-based conservation in SINT. As mentioned by Prof. Shane in her presentation last week, this project is being done hand in hand with Summer State University and BOSIS, a people's organization based in San Isidro, Paranas. They are establishing a nursery for the XC2 conversation, conservation rather, of the native trees of Samar. In conclusion, the biodiversity assessment in SINT showed the diverse fauna and flora of the Kaigaman ecosystem threatened and endemic species, as well as the new species records should be prioritized in the local and national conservation efforts of various institutions working collaboratively. Second point, the analysis of the vegetation of SINT display three clusters of three communities. 
The structural features exhibited by these communities are distinctive in Samar forests over limestone. And the last point here. SINP indeed has its natural and cultural significance which makes it worthy of its nomination as a UNESCO World Natural Heritage Site. Culture and nature should be seen as woven or integrated systems that are both crucial in the conservation and sustainable use of Kaigangan landscape. That's all and thank you so much for listening. All right, so thank you to uh, Ms. Elaine for sharing her presentation. So she has opted to share a recorded presentation since, as we all know, it's been monsoon season and our internet connection sometimes is spotty. So in order to deliver still her talk successfully, she has pre-recorded this lecture. But don't despair, she's also present here today. So. She's here, Yan. She, hi, ma'am. Okay, so she's here to answer your questions. So can we um, give Miss um, Elaine a round of applause? Kahit through the clap reactions. Okay, thank you so much. I will also yeah, so live claps. Okay, for me. Okay, so thank you, Miss Elaine. Okay, so um, I hope, Marami, uh, you we have all um, gotten significant information from her presentation with regards to the diversity of what they found in terms of the flora and also the fauna and how we how we can also see that uh, as, that summer island has um, abundant cultural and sociological um, significance okay so again thank you to everyone to our 55 55 participants strong webinar. So thank you again for attending and for listening. And again, thank you, Ma'am Elaine, for sharing with us the biodiversity of Kaigangan forests. Okay, so we will now proceed to our question and answer portion. And we have Professor Des Fernandez that will help out in facilitating your questions. Okay, mm -hmm. so again, may I just remind you that um, please um, keep your um, Please keep, uh, please, please mute yourselves if you are not yet addressed and please do not show your video yet if you are not yet addressed. And again, if you have any other, any, and if you have questions, okay, lang bigla, please feel free to type it in our chat box, whether it's via Zoom or Facebook Live. We will try to answer your questions. Okay, so again, I will now give the floor to Mam Des and to Mam Elaine for the question and answer portion. Um, okay. Ayan, thank you, Prof. Elia. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mute. And thank you, Ms. Elaine, for your enlightening talk on the uh, biodiversity of forest over limestone ecosystems in SINP. Now, we will now proceed to answer some questions from our audience and we'll accommodate the questions sent in advance through our registration form and then those from Zoom and Facebook Live comments. So you still have a chance to type in any questions you have for Ms. Elaine. So our first question is from Camila Frances Naputo from Philippine Eagle Foundation. So Ms. Elaine, what are the practical challenges that you face during the conduct of the study? Okay. So um, everyone again, um, thank you for listening. And about that, practical challenges that you faced when you conducted your study. So um, one is that uh, the I think it's the weather in itself because um, summer is located in Eastern Desaya, so it is a common entry point of um, typhoon. So we really have to gauge on that. And then another challenge there is for is the the terrain in itself because it's if you remember the presentation and um, the map, um, the terrain is quite. Uh, very rugged and it's very difficult for our uh, uh, project staff to do the uh, the field work in itself and another challenge although it's beyond limitation for most of us is the 
pandemic because um, we were actually we actually planned to do another field work but then the the covid ha pandemic has limited our travel restrictions so Mm -mm. I think we planned na bumalik pa in a drier season as you mentioned wala may wet or wetter seasons okay. lang. So unfortunately inabot na kami ng pandemic before kami nakabalik. So another question, thank you very much for that answer. Uh is from Abeloema Kabahog from Central Mindanao University. And the question is when it comes to biodiversity assessment how can you collect the specimens without any bias to the research type? So, with regards to that, I think it is essential first na that you should um, be aware of the study site. So, you should gather information like um, the map in itself, know the uh, know the types, land types, um, know which parts are forest over limestone because our for our in our case um we are targeting the forest over limestone ecosystem and then from there um it is also important na that we do reconnaissance before we do the actual field work so that um we should uh, we have an idea of um where are we actually uh, which are actually sites that are Meeting the, uh, no, meeting the, uh, meeting in addressing the problems. Na hindi rin not it's not also in a in an unbiased way. And from there, you can um, pre-point in the map where you can plot the sites. Ayun. Baka, um, Mom Des, maybe you can um, at least try to um, uh, mention for the uh, final assessment site. <laughs> I think for both Fauna and Flora, uh, another way to eliminate bias between research sites is to really standardize yung methods you use mm -hmm. in each one. Although we have to make adjustments, for example, sa Taft, I think, mas difficult yung train there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had to make a few adjustments, pero in terms of yung length ng transect and the number of traps and uh, nets na ginamit, as long as there's standard between the two or uh, the three study sites in total, namin, that also helps eliminate the bias between sites. So, so standardization is key. Yeah. So in the case of the plants, naman, we had uh, we had the uh, quadrat methods and then we did the quadrat we laid out the uh, line transects for the understory, which will be discussed by Ma March later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so speak. Speaking of Ma Marge, yeah. the third question I think would be better reserved for uh, our last Q&A. And uh, para kasama si Marge dun sa question and answer. Okay. okay. So thank you very much for answering our audience questions, Ms. Elaine. And uh, if and, and thank you everyone also for uh, sending in your questions. And if uh, may pahabol na questions, kunyari, uh, can they contact you for any follow-up questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. You can send an email to ecvillianueva4 at up.edu.ph. So I'll mm -hmm. type it also in the chat box so that you can send an email in case some question pop into your mind. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Elaine. So now to introduce our next speaker, uh, let's go back to our host for the day, si Ma'am Elia. Back to you, Ma'am Elia. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Des, and thank you, Ma'am Elaine, for the um, question and answer. So, mamaya, meron pa tayong part two, where, wherein we will be joined by our one of our resident plant experts in the field, si, uh, Professor Marjorie De Los Angeles. So, our next speaker okay, is Professor Marjorie De Los Angeles from the Plant Biology Division of UPLB. She's currently taking her PhD in botany in... Shishuang Bana, did I say it right? Shishuang Bana Tropical Botanical Garden, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Okay, oh my God. So, tama daw yung pagbigkas ko ng Shishuang Bana. 
right? Yeah, she has authored papers on physiological responses of plants in heavy metal contaminated areas and about pteridophyte diversity of Mount Makiling and key biodiversity areas. Apart from being an academic, she is an, in, an, as, an aspiring botanical artist and believes that botanical illustration is an avenue to further appreciate the diversity, beauty, and importance of plants. So I think she has participated in the recently uh, launched um, online exhibit, Philbas, if I'm not mistaken. So you can try to uh, visit the Philbas website and exhibit and look for um, the artworks of Professor Marjorie de las Angeles. So without further ado, let us now listen to Professor Marjorie's talk about the understory plants. So again, let us welcome her with clap reactions or party reactions, whichever you prefer. Good day, everyone. I am Ms. Marjorie D. de los Angeles, a faculty member of the Institute of Biological Sciences and a member of the DOST funded program, Assessment and Conservation of Forests over Limestone Ecosystem Biodiversity in Selected Municipalities of Summer Island, Philippines, also known as Conserve Keigangan. Before I proceed with my presentation, allow me to introduce the program and the members of Project One. The mission of the program, Conserve Keigangan, is to assess, conserve, and sustainably utilize the natural resources such as plants, fungi, bacteria, and animals in Kaigangan. Kaigangan is a summer local dialect for forests over limestone. The program covers four municipalities of Summer Island, which are Paranas, Taft, Basay, and Giwan. The program is made up of four projects, and I am a member of Project One. Project one is assessment of biodiversity in forests over limestone. As reflected in my slide, here are the members of the project. Leading the program as well as project one is Professor Inocencio Ibuot Jr. Ms. Elaine Lorene C. Villanueva is our senior science research specialist. Ms. Gina M. Mallison is our clerk. Assistant Professor Desi Marie Antoinette P. Fernandez is our project staff. Mr. Paul John S. Tolentino and Ms. Ren Divien S. Obena are our university research associates. There are 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals and Conserve Egangan as a research program covers some of these global goals. But without further ado, on behalf of the project, it is my honor and privilege to present a portion of our results entitled Ecology of Understory Plants or Forests over Limestone in Summer Island, Philippines. Once again, I am Ms. Marjorie D. De Los Angeles, a project staff of Conserve Kaigangan. Summer Island, together with Leyte, are collectively known as Eastern Visayas and is identified as one of the 15 biogeographic zones in the Philippines due to its unique and rich biodiversity. It hosts a number of native and endemic species due to its extreme rugged terrain, geographic location, climatic and edaphic conditions, biogeographic conditions, and a variety of habitats and forest formations, one of which is forests over limestone. Recent expeditions in these forests has led to new species records as well as the discovery and description of new floral species. Why study floral communities? A well-documented and conserved forest over limestone brings in numerous priceless ecosystem services that will sustain ecosystem health, minimizing global warming and drastic climatic changes, aggravating disaster in this vulnerable region of summer, as observed during typhoons. Furthermore, assessment of floral communities in the epigaic region of forests over limestone ecosystem can generate useful information such as floral diversity, community structure, niche partitioning, information on plant adaptations, as well as information on plant assemblage patterns. With these in mind, the following objectives were developed. Generally, this study was conducted to document and examine plant diversity and species composition in forests over limestone of Paranas, Taft, and Giwan of Summer Island. Specifically, this study aims to 
document plant understory species in forests over limestone and to describe patterns of plant distribution with reference to ecological parameters using multivariate tools. Assessment of floral diversity was conducted in Paranat, Taf, and Giwan of Summer Island. The study was conducted from October 1 to 16, 2019. The selection of sampling plots was based on the biophysical characteristics of the area, including plant diversity heterogeneity, topographic attribute, extent of forest over limestone area, and presence of anthropogenic disturbances. Materials and methodologies were chunked into five. Number one, processing of permits, such as gratuitous permits. Number two, plant species assessment. Understory plant species were recorded in established plots. Pertinent data such as scientific name, local name, height, and cover of all plant species were recorded as well. Number three, soil analysis. Soil samples were collected and edaphic factors were analyzed such as percent organic matter, percent nitrogen, phosphorus, electrical conductivity, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc, copper, manganese, and chlorine. Number four, herbarium specimens. Herbarium specimens were prepared and filed at the Plant Biology Division Herbarium. And finally, data analysis. To detect significant changes in the plant floristic composition across select municipalities, data obtained from soil and plant were subjected to multivariate analysis. Results showed that a total of 26 understory plant species were recorded from the different established plots across the municipalities of Paranas, Taft, and Giwan. From the 26, six fern species belonging to six genera from six families were recorded, and a total of 21 flowering plant species belonging to 13 genera and nine families were also recorded. Based from the forest floor census, highest species richness occurred in Paranas and was recorded to have a total of 18 understory plant species, followed by Taft with 12 and Giwan with 5. Paranas was computed to have the highest Shannon values and was deemed to be most diverse among the sites, and Giwan with the lowest Shannon values and was the least diverse among sites. A lower species diversity in Giwan may be attributed to the possibility that the forests over limestone in the area is still young. The analysis of importance values of species was computed for every site and summarized in tables 3, 4, and 5. Out of the 18 understory species in Paranas, the dominant plant species based from IV was Pandanus sp, belonging to the family Pandanaceae, followed by Cyclopeltis prenata, a fern species. Similarly, in the established transects at Taft, among the 12 species, Pandanus sp was computed to be the dominant species based on IV. The dominant plant species in Giwan based from IV is Tradiscantia zebrina, belonging to the family Comelinaceae. Based from the non-metric multidimensional scaling, plant species composition were similar among plots established in the sites. Plant species composition were similar between Paranas and Taft and between Taft and Giwan. These similarities can be accounted by proximity of sites. Environmental factors are equally important in biodiversity assessment and indicate overall environmental quality. Structural and functional characteristics of communities are shaped in accordance to habitat conditions. Interestingly, most of the analyzed edaphic factors are not typical of forests over limestones. Results from soil analysis revealed variations in soil chemical characteristics across sites. Soil pH values across sites were identified to be slightly acidic. Acidic nature of soils can be explained with the intensive leaching of basic cations brought about by high rainfall. Samar falls under type 2 and type 4 climate where the former is characterized by having no dry season with pronounced maximum rain periods throughout the year. Generally, phosphorus, percent nitrogen, and percent organic matter was high in all plots. Percent OM was highest in Giwan and lowest in Taft. 
variation in average soil OM across sites can be explained by differences in vegetation cover, amount of leaf litter, and continuous rain promoting decomposition. The analyzed edaphic factors were found correlated based from the resulting canonical correspondence analysis with the first two axes explaining 36.68% of the variation and patterns among understory plant species. Understory plant species recorded from Paranas and Taf are highly affected by iron and EC. Plant species from Giwan, on the other hand, is positively correlated with pH, percent OM, percent nitrogen, phosphorus, chlorine, potassium, copper, manganese, magnesium, sodium, and zinc. To summarize the results of the study, a total of 26 understory plant species were recorded across the municipalities of Paranas, Taf, and Giwan. From the 26, six fern species belonging to six genera from six families were recorded, whereas a total of 21 flowering plant species belonging to 13 genera and from nine families were also recorded. Based from the forest floor census, highest species richness occurs in Paranas with a total of 18 understory plant species, followed by Taft with 12 and Giwan with 5. A lower species diversity in Giwan may be attributed to the possibility that the forests are still young. Interestingly, most of the analyzed edaphic factors are not typical of forests over limestones. Soil pH values across sites were identified to be slightly acidic. Generally, percent OM was high in all plots. Percent OM was highest in G1 and lowest in TAF. Variation in average soil OM across sites can be explained by differences in vegetation cover, amount of leaf litter, and continuous rain promoting decomposition. Understory plant species recorded from Paranas and TAF are highly affected by iron and EC. Plant species from G1, on the other hand, is positively correlated with pH, percent OM, percent nitrogen, phosphorus, chlorine, potassium, copper, manganese, magnesium, sodium, and zinc. Understanding key environmental factors are equally important in biodiversity assessment and can indicate overall environmental quality. On behalf of the project, I would like to acknowledge the following government agencies. University of the Philippines, Las Banos, Samar State University, Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development, Samar Island Natural Park Protected Area Management Board, Local Government Units of Paranas, Taft, and Basay, and Basaranan na Organisasyon Hansan Isidro Samar. Thank you very much, everyone. I am now ready to entertain your questions, comments, and suggestions. All right, so thank you, Professor Marge, for your very detailed presentation about the minerals and other factors that can affect the understory plants in Samar Island. Okay, so again, um, her presentation was pre-recorded since um, we, for, um, we prepared just in case that uh, the internet connection might be spotty and she, and she might have technical difficulties, but she is present today. So I am gentleman si Ma Marge to answer your questions personally. Okay, and again, thank you for our participants. We are now 61 um, participants strong in this webinar. So thank you for joining us today. And she will now, and Professor Marge will now accommodate your questions with the help of, again, Professor Des Fernandez. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to add them in our chat box, whether it's Zoom or on Facebook. And Professor Marge, Professor Des, and Miss Elaine will try their best to answer your um, concerns. Okay, so I will now turn the floor over to Professor Des, Professor Marge, and Ma'am Elaine. Thank you very much, Elia. And thank you very much to Prof. Marge for your exciting talk on uh, <laughs> the biodiversity of uh, the diversity of plants in SINP and all our other sites. So our first question here is, uh, what should be the role of understory species in ecosystem processes? 
Okay, so um, thank you very much, Ma'am Des. So um, understory species are found at a bottommost level of the forest vertical strata. So our forest is not only comprised of trees, um, um, ferns, shrubs, mosses, but they can also be um, categorized into certain layers in the forest strata. So understory species are very important because they are they create moist or damp. Um, environments for other biota such as um, let's say mosses which uh, are wherein moisture is very important for um, them completing their life cycle also um, understory species are also important for our animals because they are also um, the fruits and uh, fruits and forages or leaves can also become food for our faunal friends so um, also not only this but also the Intricate root structure of some of our understory species can also help arrest um, soil erosion. It can help maintain the soil ecosystem. That's why I'm um, very fortunate that the project has um, this arm or has this layer of research to, to it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in relation to animals then, because I think I mentioned previously in the presentation of uh, Elaine, na, yung mga platymantis, which are very diverse in your forest over limestone ecosystems, they lay eggs not on water, like water bodies, pero sometimes they lay eggs on leaf axils, the mga understory plants. So they undergo direct development. So nagahat sila dun sa mga leaf axils ng understory plants and then they develop into froglets. So yun yung isang significance nila. And uh, next question is from me. <laughs> So I was just curious, <clears throat> why was CCA used to analyze the relationship between the plants and environmental variables, say, versus other meso methods like PCA? Um, the utilization of the canonical computation analysis was utilized here in the paper, mainly because of the we have more than two um, environmental factors. So if um, if you recall in the presentation, we had, um, aside from electrical conductivity, we also have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, um, percent organic matter, and a lot of heavy metals that were analyzed with the help of UPLV. So thank you, Paul. Um, and CCA is the best, uh, one of the best statistical tools in order to identify um, at what, what are the different um, what are different edaphic factors that highly um, affect the different understory species and different um, municipalities that are found there. So the PCA can also be utilized, but um, it's more of um, what you call this individual dimensions. So it might be limited to mm. so unlike CCA, where we can have a multitude or a multi multi um, wedding pasukan in essence na madaming factors, and you can visually look at them. Uh, ito pala yung patterns. So. Mm -hmm. Statistics statistic is very nice, no? Uh -oh. <laughs> <Ayan>. <laughs> and thank you for that explanation because I think a lot of our students who are using metadata right now that have pandemic na analysis were able to learn will able to be uh, will be enlightened by what different methods they could use. We have another uh, question. How do you classify a plant as understory? May limit po ba sa height? Yes. May limit po sa height. Um, if it's below one meter, it could be considered as an understory. But also, um, botanical knowledge is very essential as well because sometimes below one meter, sapling pala ng tree. So these mm -hmm. are some considerations that you have to do when you when, that you have to consider when you are going to the field. So also maybe um, what kind of try to identify in the if it's an herb or if it's a woody hard species. Um, also, um, usually, um, with the event, with the with different, or with the advent of different field um, expeditions, malalaman at malalaman mo rin, ah, this is an understory. But if, for example, you're an early career field botanist, you can always just uh, collect it and then identify it in the lab, uh, utilizing literatures, our experts, um, colleagues to help identify if this is an understory species or if this is an early or a sapling of a tree in the area. Mm. So that's a very good tip for our early career uh, plant yeah. biologists. Yes. Yes. 
Okay. Uh, our next question is maybe can be answered by both speakers. And the question is, what are some topographic attributes considered during the conduct of the survey? So maybe this is more for Elaine, but you can also answer, Ma Marge. Topographic attributes. So, it's more of uh, of course, yung dahil nga forest over limestone, so we had to know na ano siya, it's, the site is really lying on that area. And then, of course, yung uh, tinignan din namin yung uh, aside from topographic, it's it's more of ano kasi, eh, human, uh, yung presence of human disturbance kasi we would also like to see if um, the disturbance has been affecting the vegetation in the area or the animals for faunal assessment. And another is the, ano, the slope. You can also, because there are differences in the uh, presence of vegetation and of course of fauna in the, depending on the slope of the area or the elevation. Also, as I pursue. Yeah. Uh, uh, March, maybe you can What are some of the topographic attributes considered during the conduct of the study? Okay, so um, topographic attributes, this would include, as mentioned by Ms. Elaine, in slope, um, your aspect. But, um, what else? Um, especially in forests over limestones, um, it's really a challenge to conquer mm -hmm. such kinds of forest types, no? Since um, the rocks are very, are very sharp. And one of the major considerations that the research team, I believe, Mam Des, we considered was if there is a, uh, if there's a ravine. So mm -hmm. we ensure that aside from our safety, mainly I, we can conduct the experiment or the survey at a in such a way that not only does it compromise um, the biological data, but also consider our safety in terms of baka mas live na kami kasi 90 degrees na pala. <laughs> so these are certain things that somehow you should have an ecological grasp upon when you look, when you go into a surveys. Mm -hmm. So not only in forests over limestones, but also in other forest types, I'm sure that topographical data such as slope, um, presence or absence of bodies of waters should be considered when you establish before or prior establishing your plots. That is why also the project team dedicated a day or two in terms of ocular inspection in the area so that we will be able to identify um, where are areas or where are sites that we can best conduct the survey, establish plots with the assurance that we can go back to our camp. Ayun po. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think they mentioned din yun ni Ede na reconnaissance is key talaga. Now you cannot just arrive in the area and uh, based on kunyari, GIS, gano'n, na mapping, parang, okay, dito tayo pupunta, and then you find out that area that you want to go to is inaccessible. Maybe another tip then is to consult with your guides and yung people in your area kasi they know the forest better than you do, definitely. So, alam nila yung areas where it is safe and konti lang yung malalaglagan na sinkhole. <laughs> So, yun. Uh, so that is that's it for the trop, uh, topographic attribute. And for our final question, I think both speakers can answer this. So, what are uh, this is from Justin Ginukod from TUP Tagig. What are some alternative ways on how to conserve our mother nature? Wow. Papang Miss Universe na tanong na ito. Okay. Um, <laughs> conserve our mother nature. There is no one. There is no actually. There is no one solution. So it's a multitude of mm -hmm. solutions, and it's it makes it very difficult, especially now with the advent of COVID, where travel restrictions are lim. Or, well, travel is limited in general. So maybe when we are at home, let's be mindful of what we purchase, like. Yung mga lazada na yan, yung mga plastic <laughs> natin. Maybe we can try to reuse, reduce, recycle, refuse mm -hmm. um, items that 
a very long lifetime before it's degraded. Mm -hmm. Also, um, aside from these practical way in conserving Mother Nature, another one is for the upcoming election, find the elect government officials who have environment in as a part of their platform who will champion mm -hmm. environment conservation, not only in their locality but only but also in well in the Philippines as a whole. So let's uh, choose. Let's be. Maging mabuti si tayo, not only in our Miss Universe candidates, but also in our government <laughs> officials. And uh, try to, this way we can help conserve the natural resources that have both flora and fauna. The Philippines has a, a very diverse area of flora and fauna. Let's try to keep it that way. Let's try to conserve them and protect them from people who are abusive. So, mm -hmm. I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you, Miss Philippines. <laughs> so uh, maybe, I know, maybe Elaine, you also yeah. have, have yeah. some insights. So, di ba na mention na mga ni mo March yung sa personal ways on how to conserve our mother nature, the mother nature, and then yung yung your our our political choice. So, I'd also like to add, siguro yung we should also try to capitalize on the institutions involved within the area, especially uh, like sa SINT and sa Q1. So yung mga, I think may mga LGU audiences tayo from the LGU. So we need to tap on them also because they are in the area also. And the people's organization, um, siguro na-emphasize ko dito during the presentation that um, um, people, uh, the, the dimension of human systems is also essential to work hand in hand with the environment para mag-function siya ng mabuti. So, I think it's a good way also that we um, we collaborate with them. That's why the program is um, has been trying to link with the agencies and people's organization. So, yeah, yan yung may add ko dun sa answer ni Mom Marge. Uh -oh. Actually, tama yun. Na parang in, in a way, the pandemic is not all bad kasi uh, naging mas prolific yung webinars. So it's not just us tapping the LGU. Pero um, and members of the wider uh, community uh, or, or the wider public are parang nagiging aware sila na, ah, meron palang people working here sa mga forest over limestone. So if you want to contact us, ano, tap us, we can help you. We're always willing to help. And uh, may pahabol na last question. And I think it's uh, this is a nice question to end on. From Porferio Bao Jr. from Aborlan High. Po, dyan po ako nag-MS thesis. So uh, what, are the, what are the significant impacts of biodiversity in the community? I assume this is the human community. So, ano po yung impact ng uh, biodiversity sa human community? So, Marge or Elaine? I think na ano ko na yun dun sa, I mentioned it mm -hmm. also dun sa presentation ko that um, one impact is that it provides livelihood to the people, to the community. Mm -hmm. Just like in Basay, um, yun nga, the women are very into this uh, mat waving and also you can see in the picture that um, uh, the women of Basai are also deeply integrated into the forest over limestone, even in the caves, because they are doing the weaving in the caves uh, there. And um, I, that is just one example na, that the, it, that's an impact of biodiversity in the community, at least to the people's end. And then towards to the environment naman, it can be positive or negative. So we as humans should be wary of that and we should um, really be aware of our impacts. Like for instance, if we, <laughs> um, yun nga, both ways siya nag, uh, nagkakaroon ng impact and mm -mm. we should be aware of that. And mo March, baka may iyaad ka. <laughs> um, okay. Um, me, uh, one of the impacts of biodiversity to the community. 
number one that's on top of my head is ecosystem services. Yeah, uh, ecosystem mm-hmm. services. The more diverse a forest is, the more resilient it is to, let's say, typhoons, to um, natural disasters such as soil erosion. So it will benefit the community keeping them safe. Mm-hmm. Another is, aside uh, as mentioned by Elaine, um, economic opportunities for, mm-hmm. uh, well, for... Uh, for income, income generation siya. And another thing that I've observed is the more people know or the more that the community know what kind of plant species and animal species are found in their forests, the more they can relate to their forest. Yeah. The more they will protect it. Parang, uh, oy, oy, don't, do not, we should not allow these, um, let's say, mining industries to cut down our forests because a plant species is found there or only in the, found here or in, that, in this area. Or dyan, nandyan yung mga and then yung mga animals that are only endemic in the area, so so on and so forth. So there is power in information. There is power in biodiversity. So the more we know, the more we connect, the more we protect our forests. Mm-hmm. So um, again, come election, kindly vote for <laughs> government officials that will champion our environment. So, yeah. 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 Yes. And, I, yes, can sir, I so June, we have a okay. special guest for today, see Sir June, our <laughs> program leader. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to add because um, this is a very important question, I think. A very important question to encourage everyone to work on biodiversity. And one of the most hidden uh, impact uh, is uh, the ecosystem services, of course, which was mentioned by Marge. I'd like to go into details like fresh water. Everyone now is doing or is drinking bottled water. But if we are taking care of our biodiversity, we should have been drinking waters from our streams, from our rivers, from our springs. But you see, we cannot do that now because we have lost a lot of our biodiversity. We don't have fresh air. Maybe one day we would be buying air because uh, we, we will be losing all of them. Because these are, these are the products of biodiversity which we ignore, which are ignored by everyone. A stable ecosystem that would uh, resist um, um, disturbances as was mentioned by Marge. And of course, there will be less warming. We are always clamoring about climate change, et cetera, et cetera. Especially during this time of the Anthropocene, we have lots of problems about this, but uh, we never, we, only very few know that it is biodiversity that is the answer. We have to conserve our biodiversity so that we would be able to uh, maintain a cool environment, safe for everyone, and then fresh water for everyone and fresh air for everyone and a stable environment for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir June, for your cameo appearance. And tama yan, tama yung sinabi ni Sir June na parang um, uh, yung ecosystem services provided by our environment and by diversity, medyo hindi natin masyado naiisip how important it is. And to end our program, uh, I'm giving the floor back to Ma'am Elia. But first, uh, since nabigay na ni uh, Elaine yung kanyang uh, contact details. Si, ba, si Prof. March, baka you're also willing to share uh, your prof date, uh, your uh, your details in case uh, may mga pahabol na question. Ah uh, yes, um, you may send your inquiries to me um, using my email address mtdelosangeles1 at up.edu.ph. But also you can contact the the email addresses that are found in our background. So pwede na rin po dito kayo yeah. mag-contact if you have any questions or inquiries. So um, like and subscribe our Facebook and our YouTube channel for more updates. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Marge and Elaine. Uh, back to you, Ma'am Elia. All right. So... Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the riveting discussion to end our talk, Ma'am Des, Ma'am Marge, Ms. Elaine, and the special appearance of our program director, Dr. Buat. Okay, so just to echo um, the sentiments uh, made during the uh, question and answer portion. So just to summarize, so everything actually is interconnected. So we should, the more we know, the more we connect with them, and the more we should protect our environment. 
Okay? And in order to do so, we can do so through personal efforts. We can do so by linking up with um, organizations that promote the protection and the conservation of our biodiversity of the biodiversity in our country and on a larger scale to hold accountable and to go for um, candidates for to elect a responsible um, people into positions that would also champion uh, the rights and protection of our uh, of our um, resources. Okay. So yeah. And so thank you, thank you so much to everyone to our fifty seven particip fifty seven participants strong webinar. So thank you so much for participating, for sending in your questions, for listening to us, and we hope that you have um, picked up um, some nugget of information or two. Okay, and we hope to see you again for our next week's presentation. So let me just share my screen because next week we will be handling, okay, we will be hearing from Dr. Uh, Professor John Daniel Ong and, the, uh, and his um, report about the um, project three of the Conserve Kaigangan project. And they will be reporting on the profiling of the profile of soil bacterial and fungal communities in karst forests of Samar using next generation sequencing. So for those that have been, for those that have um, their um, interests in microbes and also some molecular biology on the side. So I think this next week's seminar might be for you, okay? So again, thank you for participating in our webinar. Okay, I will just, yeah, sorry for the glitch. So we will um, we will be um, sending the link for Evos. Oh, I forgot. So for a while, um, wait. Okay, sorry, my bad. So here is the link for the webinar. So let me just share my screen. Okay, and so here's the link for our webinar. So kindly go to bit.ly Kaigangan Week 4. Okay, and please um, complete the evaluation form. Okay, in order to receive your certificates or if you have your handy QR scanners, you can opt to scan the QR code presented in our screen. And Professor um, De Los Angeles has also included the link to the um, Kaigangan week four webinar in our chat, so please do so. Okay, and before we end our webinar, so just to add on to um, what our speakers have uh, mentioned, so another member of our program, um, Professor Diana Shane, who is from Samar, also wants to share the insight that Paranas and nearby municipalities are known for their cold spring resorts since they have good forest cover and therefore they have good water sources. So again, so another reason to maintain and protect the biodiversity of our uh, forests in our country. Because um, on this note, <laughs> um, once the pandemic is over and um, tourism will also be a, a part of trying to uh, stimulate the economy. Again, it will also be beneficial for us. If we protect the environment, we also can uh, partake in what it can share to us. Okay. So again, so again, thank you. Again, here is the webinar evaluation. Before you go, or you scan the QR, or you click the link that is present in our chat. Okay, so before we go, uh, before we end, before we end our seminar, sorry, technical glitch. And so before we end our seminar, kindly turn on your um, videos for our screenshot. So just to take a picture of everyone who has participated, who has graciously um, stayed with us till the end for listening to our talks. Okay, so again, if you may kindly turn on your video cameras and uh, this will take a while because we are we have three pages so kindly maintain your best smile as i will try to capture 
everyone's good looking faces. Okay, so I will now start with page one. So one, two, three, smile. All right. Okay, so just a moment. All right. Okay, holding on to page two. Okay. Kindly smile for me, guys. Okay. Nice. So last page. Okay. Please exercise your cheek muscles for the last time. Okay. All right. So thank you again for, to everyone who has participated and listened to our webinar. Again, please, um, he, please um, also try to join us next week for Professor Ong's uh, talk about microbes. Okay. And I hope you have um, gotten a lot of valuable information from our webinar today. So again, I am Eleanor Villaverde, your host for today, and a member of Conserve Kaigangan. And thank you again for joining us today. Bye-bye.